What is up guys, my name is Ignaz, welcome back to the channel. I just recently did my portfolio update, where in the month of June I've added into my Intel's position. But unfortunately it was quite a poor month for the stock. On June 6th it was trading at $43.34 per share, but the price stumbled quickly after, and in a month it is down to $36.34 losing $7 per share at minus 16.15%. One year's performance is also bad, minus 35.21%, but at least in the last 5 years the stock did go up, from $33.88 in 2017, up $2.46, higher for 7.26%. So Intel's market cap is now at just under $150 billion at 148, but interestingly with the stock price going down, the dividend yield is moving higher now at 4.02%. That is quite a high yield even for Intel. So today I want to put the stock against other chip names and find out if this yield is worth getting into or if there are other interesting opportunities out there in the market. So a name that I've picked for this dividend comparison will be Broadcom, ticker symbol AVGO. In one month the stock is down for 14.86%. One year's performance is almost at zero, only higher by 0.86%, but in five years Broadcom had quite a decent growth, going from around $240 in 2017, plus almost 100%, to $477.84 per share. Market cap is over Intel's at almost $200 billion, but the dividend yield is above 3%, but below Intel's at 3.43%. And the third name for this comparison will be Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM. So this stock had the best performance in the last month, only going down for 12.04%. Unfortunately, that is the same performance of one year, lower for 12.51%. But they did show a decent performance in five years, with the stock going from $55.35 in 2017, up for 123.18%, to $123.53. Market cap is under Intel's at $138 billion, and Qualcomm also currently has the lowest dividend yield out of the three with 2.43%. So these will be the three names that we are comparing today, and to make that happen, let's use Google Sheets. So in order to make a dividend comparison between these three names, we'll use five different metrics that I've picked. Dividend yield, dividend payout ratio, years of consecutive dividend increases, 5-year compound annual dividend growth rate, and the dividend yield compared to its 5-year average. We'll put the numbers for each metric in this table, and then compare them between each other. The company for the best result on each metric gets a point, then we can calculate how many points each name got, and in the end the stock with the most points will be considered the winner of this comparison. I hope that the rules were easy to follow, so let's start. So the first metric we are taking a look into is the dividend yield. It is calculated by taking the annual dividend per share and dividing it by the share price. Intel is currently paying $1.46 per share in dividends, and with a share price of $36.34, that is a dividend yield of 4.02%. Now switching to Broadcom, their dividend is at $16.40 per share, so at a price of $477.84, it is a yield of 3.43%. And lastly we have Qualcomm, they are paying exactly $3 per share, so with a price of $123.53, that is a dividend yield of 2.43%. Second metric will be the dividend payout ratio. The percentage here shows what part of company's earnings are paid back to investors as dividends. Here we want to see the lowest percentage, meaning that the company is left with more cash available, to otherwise reinvest back into the company or keep on increasing dividends. So for Intel the dividend payout ratio is now at 41.09%, meaning that currently around two-fifths of company's earnings are paid back to shareholders. Now going for Broadcom, and their payout ratio is just a bit lower at 40.67%, but it turns out Qualcomm is currently in the best position, with the payout ratio being at 22.65%. Metric number 3 is the years of consecutive dividend increases. The number here shows for how many years the company has been increasing dividends for at least one quarter every year. So in Intel's case they have been increasing dividends for the last 8 years. Now if we go for Broadcom they seem to be even more committed, with increasing dividends consecutively for 13 years, but the best one is again Qualcomm, 
as they seem to be mostly committed to dividend growth, with consecutive dividend increases for the last 21 years. Next metric is the compound annual dividend growth rate. For the comparison, we'll take the 5-year average, including the next year's estimate. So in Intel's case, the 5-year dividend growth rate is at exactly 4%. Now switching to Broadcom, their dividends has seen more increases recently, with a 5-year growth rate of 15.73%, and then for Qualcomm it is on the lower side, with a dividend growth rate of 4.3%. Now this last metric is the most interesting for me, and that is the current dividend yield compared to its 5-year average. For this metric, we'll be using my dividend stock watchlist on Google Sheets. We are now in the tab for Intel, and here we have its dividend yield percentages for each quarter in the last 5 years. Out of this information, we can calculate that on average in 5 years, Intel's dividend yield was at 2.57%. So with the stock moving lower recently, and with the 5 year average moving higher, we don't have that many quarters where the stock was trading with a yield over that average. One notable was back in 2017, with a dividend yield of 2.87% over the average for 11.69%, and then similarly in 2020 at 2.86% over average for 11.30%. But just before the pandemic hit in the beginning of 2020, we had the dividend yield bottoming at 1.91%, so it was below the 5-year average at minus 25.67%. But recently the price has been going down, and we have the dividend yield now over 4% at 4.02, which is now over the 5-year average for 56.45%. So this is here the number that we will be comparing. Now let's switch to Broadcom and we have its dividend yield history over the last 5 years, where on average it is calculated to be at 3.07%. So worst time was back in 2017, where the stock was trading at a dividend yield of 1.62%, under average for 47.26%, but then it seems we had the opportunity in 2020 to get the stock with over 6% in dividends, so over the 5 year average for 96.30%. Recently the stock was trading close to the average, but lately moved over with 3.43%, so now over average by 11.66%. And lastly we have Qualcomm, with an average 5-year dividend yield of 2.88%. So the stock was trading way over average prior to 2020, most notably back in 2019 with a dividend yield of 4.45%, over average for 54.59%, but the price was way up there in 2021, where the dividend yield was at 1.54%, under average for 46.50%. At least this year the price has been moving lower, and we have now the dividend yield at 2.43%, but that is unfortunately still under the 5-year average for 15.58%. Now if you would be interested in doing a similar analysis for any other dividend paying stock, you are able to do that by following the first link at the top of the description. Otherwise, feel free to add a ticker in a comment below, and I'll consider adding that into my watchlist here. Maybe you could share some interesting opportunities out there that I'm still missing. So now we are back into our comparison table, and the numbers for each metric are in. We can start assigning points. So Intel gets the first with the largest dividend yield at 4.02%, for the lowest dividend payout ratio, a point goes to Qualcomm with 22.65%. Then Qualcomm gets another point for the years of consecutive dividend increases at 21 years. Broadcom has the largest 5-year compound annual dividend growth rate at 15.73. And then comparing the dividend yield with its 5-year average, Intel gets a point being over average at 56.45%. Now that we've finished, we can calculate points, so Intel got 2, Broadcom 1, and Qualcomm 2. Since Broadcom got only one metric with a dividend growth rate, let's try skipping on that, and the next best was Qualcomm with 4.30%. So I'm adding another point for it, and this means that with this slight lead and 3 points, Qualcomm is considered the winner of this comparison. And that was it, make sure to support the channel and leave a thumbs up under the video. What do you think is Qualcomm a worthy pick right now? Or do you prefer another semiconductor name? Share your pick in a comment below. If you would be interested in getting access to my dividend investing watchlist, then consider memberships. By becoming a member you will get access to Discord, 
where I share all my Google Sheets documents and all the buys and sells exactly when I do them. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. Previously, I've looked into several other companies, so if you are interested in any of these, then click on a video that is currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing y'all in the next one.